May corn, wine, and oil, and all the necessaries of life abound among the people of the world. And may this building be continued and preserved to the latest ages. What do these things really signify? Could it be an occult ceremony representing some sort of demonic conspiracy, as some suggest? Or is it merely a harmless practice to honor an ancient tradition? To investigate these things, we first review the beliefs of the secret societies that came to America. It is clear that the arcane symbolism in Washington, D.C. begins with them. When you want to talk about symbols and what they mean, you really have to look at who's authored these symbols, what, what was their intentions. Well, I think it's obvious that anybody who has the eyes to see can see that the Washington, D.C., and indeed many other state capitals are festooned with occult symbols. Because these symbols come from the esoteric realm, it is important to define them according to the thinking of occult philosophers. Symbols reveal and they conceal, and that's why they're used and that's why they're so important. They reveal to those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, and they they conceal from those who do not have the eyes to see or ears to hear. In the book, Masonic and Occult Symbols Illustrated, we find this quote from Masonic author Charles G. Berger, who says that symbols came to have two meanings, the esoteric and the exoteric. The esoteric meaning was the true or original meaning, understood only by a few and closely guarded by them. The exoteric meaning was the invented or modified explanation intended for the many. This practice dates back to ancient Egypt and is explained by Dr. Robert Hieronymus, a member of a secret society called Co-Masonry and author of the book Founding Fathers, Secret Societies. As with all secret societies, you have levels, and, and if you're on the lower levels, you don't even know their upper levels. You don't even, you don't even, they don't even tell you. You bump into it by accident or someone comes along. Now, in Scottish Rite, that's something different, you know, because they know that there's a... But before then, and basically secret societies, such as, let's go to ancient Egypt. To the ancient Egyptians, the priest would tell the serfs, the guys that tilled the land, they would say, the sun is God, okay? And, and, and so the, they accepted that very um, low-level interpretation, all physical. That's not what the priest believed. But the priests believed, there was a second level, um, the priests believed that, nope, the physical sun is not the supreme being, it's the spirit which flows through the physical sun that is the supreme deity. However, there was another level, and the priests didn't even know it. It's those that were involved and, and, and elevated to to, um, if I would have told you this 15 years ago, I might have gotten shot. But this is now, I'm so glad now that this is easy to talk about. Um, the, the third level, which was, the, which was a better, a higher level of understanding, said, nope, it's not, that's not the sun. The sun is not the supreme deity. Nope, yes, spiritual energies come through the sun. That's not what we're talking about. What we're talking about is the star Sirius. The dog star, because the dog star was everything to the ancient Egyptians. Sirius is said to have been the most important star in the ancient world. It was considered the brightest star in the heavens, many times brighter than the sun. The Great Pyramid was built to synchronize with Sirius so that the light of the star would shine into the queen's chamber, supposedly to cast a beam upon an initiate during a ritual. Sirius is considered to be the, the dog star. It's considered to be the most evil star in the Egyptian pantheon. And the reason for this is because in ancient Egypt they depended on the Nile. And during the time when Sirius is in its ascendancy, which is in late July and early August, was the, was the time of drought. It was a time when the Nile was at its most, uh, its most weak in terms of being able to be being used for crops. And so the Egyptians thought this as a time of blasted blight, drought, and evil. Interesting thing about all Freemasonry is 
symbolism is ultimately very important. They don't put a lodge in the east because it's a nice place and it looks good. They put it in lodge in the east. The masters have put it in the east so because it's the rising sun. It's the rising sun. You're catching the energies of the light. As Dr. Hieronymus revealed earlier, the real light shining in the east for the Egyptians was not merely the sun, but the light of the dog star, Sirius, which some believe holds a more sinister implication. This, this dog star also has relations to the idea of modern day ceremonial magic and modern day masonry. This was especially true for a 20th century occultist and Freemason, Aleister Crowley, who openly practiced ceremonial magic and was a member of a secret order called the Order of the Silver Star. The Silver Star was a reference to Sirius. Masons teach that at the center of every Masonic Lodge there's a five-pointed star right underneath the altar upon which the candidate is obligated. But the thing is, what they don't tell you is that five-pointed star represents Sirius, which is regarded as a satanic symbol. There is perhaps no symbol that evokes occult suspicion like the figure of the pentagram, which from ancient times was associated with the dog star Sirius. Masonic philosopher Albert Pike wrote that Sirius still glitters in our lodges as the blazing star. The blazing star is an ancient Gnostic term for Sirius and as shown here is symbolized in Freemasonry by the five-pointed star or pentagram. According to Pike, this symbol in masonry dates back to the pentalpha of the Greek philosopher Pythagoras. The pentalpha gets its name for the five alphas or Greek letter A's which make up its composition. Typically in Freemasonry you see the five-pointed star with the nose point down. Now there are even there's even a division in Masonry which considers this the evil side of Freemasonry as opposed to the non-evil side. For example, Freemasonic lodges in New York do not use the nose side down uh, star. They turn it around so the nose is pointing up, and they consider that uh, a good variety of Freemasonry. Here is an upright Masonic star, which is another type of the blazing star mentioned earlier. Some believe this representation of Sirius may be the origin of the five pointed stars which adorn the American flag, as well as the stars that adorn the Statue of Freedom on top of the U.S. Capitol. Incredibly, these same five pointed stars were carved by Freemasons into the ceiling of Rosslyn Chapel in Scotland more than 500 years ago. Because Sirius is said to arise in the east, it also became known as the Eastern Star. To the Egyptians, Sirius was identified with the dog god Anubis, which is where the name Dog Star comes from. Anubis was said to have guarded the gates of death and was the protector of mysteries. Meanwhile, the Romans recognized Sirius as Janitor Lathaeus, or the Keeper of Hell. These dark associations may be the reason for the sometimes grim view of Sirius and the five-pointed star that represents it. But Sirius was also associated with the Egyptian goddess Isis. And here, as we connect the dots, a more complete picture begins to emerge. For the Egyptians, the rising of Sirius in the east preceded the annual flooding of the Nile River, which for them was a magical event. It was also the time that the goddess Isis would appear and give birth to Horus, the divine child of the Egyptian trinity. The all-seeing eye is also called the Eye of Horus, and in Freemasonry, Horus symbolizes the Masonic concept of a Christ. This is further represented by the hieroglyph used to denote Sirius. Notice the three symbols, an obelisk, a star, and a half circle. According to Egyptologists, 
The half circle is used to denote what is called the benben, or the capstone used atop the pyramids. Throughout all history, it has been said that the capstone to the Great Pyramid of Egypt has been missing, which is why the all-seeing eye of Horus floats in its place above the pyramid on the back of the dollar bill. According to occult philosophers, the light which illuminates the eye comes not from the sun, but from the dog star Sirius, as is demonstrated by this illustration of the blazing star of masonry, centered by an all-seeing eye. As Robert Balvel writes, in many esoteric traditions, the return of the capstone of the Great Pyramid will signal the return of the Great Initiate, which, according to many prophecies, signifies the return of the Christ. Albert Pike describes the Masonic Trinity as expressed through Sirius and the symbols that are seen in most all Masonic halls. Notice this image with the sun on one side and the moon on the other, while the all-seeing eye sits in between with light blazing behind it. Pike writes that the sun and moon represent the two grand principles, the male and the female. Both shed their light upon their offspring, the blazing star or Horus.